Um, yes, so someone has to go last, and that's me. I will be quick, because I know you all want to get home, get flights, go to the pub, 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 have a beer, whatever you want to do. Um, so I'm going to be quite quick on this, and I'm going to talk about what we're doing now, today. Um, we're not talking about what we're going to do in five years or ten years, which we've had a lot of conversation about, but what we're doing right now. Um, and I'm going to focus on concept testing, something that most people in marketing product development, product innovation will do. So we already know this. We are in a mobile world. Everything needs to be simple, it needs to be fast, and it needs to be intuitive. Nothing new. And what we're also seeing is that actually, people are skipping desktops and laptops, especially in developing markets. I'm from the UK, and when I left the UK five years ago, we were heavily into online research, online panels. Everything was being done online. Developing markets such as Malaysia, we're kind of skipping um, the online platforms. Other developing areas, we're skipping them. Africa, everything is being done on mobile. Everything is being done on tablets. It's kind of skipping that online platform. So we need to catch up. The uh, emulation, the goal, the what we want to achieve is nicely coined by BBC iPlayer. Does anyone know what BBC iPlayer is? So BBC iPlayer is an online system for the BBC where you can watch any of their programs anywhere, especially if you have a VPN that allows you to. Um, you can access them anywhere and apparently they are being accessed on uh, over a thousand devices. So for market research, the idea is that we want to be able to be accessing consumers and asking consumers questions on multiple devices. We want to be device agnostic. That's our first target. Okay. There's no point in having someone only able to access a project or a questionnaire from a laptop. They have to be able to access it from a tablet, from their smartphone, even from you know, the non-smartphones, text phones. We need to be able to contact people on every device, everywhere. We're not talking about just in certain countries. We're talking globally. We're talking worldwide. We have a platform called Engage, which allows us to do this. It automatically detects the device that you're answering the question from and formats that questionnaire to that device. It doesn't matter what device it is. It detects, it reads, it understands, and it presents it to you in that device. So we can already do this. That's fine. That's the simple bit. There's one bit that's always been troubling us, especially in my field. I do a lot of innovation research, and that's concept tests. Concept tests are kind of the fundamental. We have to test new ideas, we have to test concepts, and we have to give people an opportunity to see, is my new idea going to be a success? But the problem with concept tests is that traditionally they've been carried out face-to-face, -face, pen and paper, with A4 printed concepts, nicely laminated so that they don't get destroyed. If we start moving towards device agnostic systems, then how can we replicate that? How can we database our data? How can we compare and benchmark our new concept scores and our new concept tests to what's been done traditionally? How do we do this? We need to make sure that um, the data that we get now for our new ideas is relevant and is usable. So we embarked on R&D um, to look at a range of different categories, a range of different products, in a range of different uh, purchase scenarios. So high frequency purchases versus low frequency purchases, planned purchases versus spontaneous purchases, chocolates and biscuits over alcoholic beverages or insurance, how do we buy things? So we did all of these big R&D projects to try and test device agnostic concept testing. Basically, a concept test has to have the same outputs. But in order to be active on devices such as a mobile phone and a tablet, as people have said several times today um, and yesterday as well, People using mobile phones are quicker. They have to be quicker. They have to be more engaging. They have to be easier and more, or more intuitive to be used. So in order to deliver this for a concept test, we have to have shorter questionnaires. We can't be asking someone to answer a 20 to 25 minute questionnaire on their mobile phone. Nobody will do it. They have to be more engaging. They have to engage traditionally hard to reach people. I'm looking at the 18 to 25 year old men who really can't be bothered to do anything to help us out. 
And they also have to give us good, better insights. And, of course, we want it fast. We want it very, very fast. Mobile phone, there should be no delay. We want to be able to ask a question and get a response, okay? On any device. So what did we find? We did this big study across multiple countries. And the first thing is, how do you present your concept? As I said, we can't present an A4 laminated piece of paper with all the details, so how do we present? So we tested a swipe concept. Essentially, has all exactly the same information that you would see on your traditional concept board, but presented on several screens. We need to test this. Does it work? Does it give the same output? Does it give the same engagement? Does it give the same understanding of the product idea or service that we're looking to market? And we found that yes. Woohoo! 62% um, longer spent time spent reading the concept versus that um, A4 piece of paper, people are spending much longer reading it. They are looking at it, they're more engaged with it. And also we had significantly fewer dropout rates than we would expect for this kind of concept research. So people are engaged, they're more focused, they're more interested in what we're asking them to do. The research also gives us better insights. We can still collect forecasts. We can still tell you how successful this product is likely to be. We can indicate and give you advice on how to reword or rewrite or how to optimize your concept, what works, what doesn't work, what needs to be changed, what stays the same. We can look at profiling your innovation. What target sample is it going to? Is it a niche product? Is it breakthrough? Is it something that's just another same, 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 same? And we can also look at benchmarking as well. And ultimately, we found that our results, the survey was 60% um, shorter, eight minutes versus 20 minutes. People are quite happy to sit and answer a question for eight minutes on their mobile phone. They'll do it while they're commuting, they'll do it while they're waiting to meet people, do it when it's convenient for them, and eight minutes is fine. Okay? We don't put quotas on device. We allow people to access on whatever device they want to, whatever is convenient for them. And what we found when we looked at the data from our R&D is that the device itself doesn't make any difference to the data, whether it's coming from a tablet, whether it's coming from an Android, whether it's coming from iOS, whatever format it's being used, there's no difference in terms of the device and the output. The program is the same, the question's the same, the output's the same. It's launched. There was a really cheesy slide. Um, it was launched in the end of Octo uh, in October last year, um, so it's all live and it's all ready to go. But there was one big question that was still outstanding, which is, what about the database? Okay, so I can give you wonderful scores and performance for your new idea, but how do I know what that means? I mean, what's the benchmark? What's the database? And that's where our tool comes into play. We don't benchmark against existing products, we benchmark against what people actually use. And we can ask those questions within a mobile survey. We're asking people, you currently have a favorite chocolate bar, tell us about that favorite chocolate bar. Now look at this concept and read this idea and tell us what you think of that. And then we want to see how those two scores compare. So there's no need for a database. So you automatically get your data, your benchmarking, and your cross-category, cross-country, everything is the same because it's me benchmarking your new product against what I currently use. So we don't need to worry about the database. Okay? This is our current timeline for launching this um, whole process. It's available now. Um, we said we wanted it fast, very, very, very fast. Currently, a um, full concept test, so that's like a full detailed analysis of everything, can be done in 10 days. Sometime during this year, we're looking to make it five days. And if you're prepared to go for a very short questionnaire, very, very quick target sample, very broad, we can even get you data overnight. I mean, there's nothing quicker than overnight. Send me a brief in the morning, and the next day you'll get your results. Fantastic, right? 
So what did our clients say? Obviously they love it, because otherwise I wouldn't have this slide up here. They love it, they think it's great, it answers all of the questions that they have, and the fact is we can deliver it very, very quickly for everyone. So I just want to wrap up. See, I told you I'd be quick, and you can all go. Um, in finishing, we know that we can do concept testing on devices, on different devices, on multiple devices. It doesn't have to be on a laptop. It doesn't have to be face-to-face. -face. It can be self-administered. It can even be interviewer-administered. There's any number of ways, but we can have it on a device. We know it's going to give us insight. We know it's going to be engaging, and we know it's going to be fast. And we also know that it encourages people who are normally really reticent to answer questions and to help us to actually get engaged and get involved. So I want to say thank you very much, and I will open the floor to any questions. That is a lot of thank yous up there. Okay, do we have any questions? My eyes are getting old. Sorry, me again. Um, just now you mentioned that the lead time is about five days, right? So, um, and then nowadays also you're talk, talking about shorter one could be just uh, overnight. Yeah. Now, um, can you tell us how many concepts that we can test at one go? What are the limitations by using this? Thanks. Um, if you want it overnight, it's essentially one concept per person. It has to be very, very quick. Um, the ideal is that we only have an eight-minute survey and we can't ask an awful lot of questions within that time. That also includes time to actually read the concept as well. So generally, if you're looking for quick turnaround, it would be you've got one concept, one idea. We really need to just quickly get it out there and check it because they're going to go ahead and do it regardless. I just really need to know, is it as good as it can get? Um, if you're looking to do multiple concepts and a much bigger test, then I would still recommend going for a bigger survey um, and taking a bit more time and a bit more investment, especially if it's, if it's exploratory um, and you're making those decisions. Okay. Any further questions from the floor? Well, thanks, Jane. It was a good, Thank good you. presentation.